Well, first, let's recap why metals conduct electricity. Metals have delocalized electrons, and when you put a potential difference across a piece of metal, those negative electrons that are free to move are now going to be attracted towards the positive end of your power source and repelled from the negative end. So these are electrons with a low ionization energy, which means they come off the metal quite easily and are free to move around. In fact, anything with freely moving charged particles will conduct electricity. Now with non-metals, the electrons in the valence shell are not free to move around. They might have a very high ionization energy, or more likely, they'll be stuck in a covalent bond and immovable. So let's look at semiconductors such as silicon. Well, silicon has a tetrahedral arrangement, and it's found between the metals and the non-metals on the staircase on the periodic table. Now, this is a confusing looking reality, so let's Pretend that they're a flat sheet like that. Each silicon has four bonds. And now let's zoom in and look at one individual silicon atom. You can see it's in group 14, so it has four valence electrons. And if I heat it enough, then one of the electrons might move into what's called the conduction band and leave a hole. Now, it isn't a literal hole, but it's called a hole. It's the lack of an electron. Shining light of the correct Frequency on the silicon may also do this. Going back to our silicon lattice, as I increase the temperature, the electrons in the covalent bonds vibrate more and more until, at a certain temperature, electrons will go into the conduction band, leaving holes behind. Once they're in the conduction band, they are freer to move around and will jump from hole to hole. As you heat the silicon more and more, the amount of electrons in the conduction band will increase. Now their movement here is pretty random, but if you were to apply a potential difference or a voltage, that is make one side plus and one side minus, the electrons will migrate towards the positive charge and away from the negative, and that's conduction. So the hotter a semiconductor such as silicon is, the higher its conductivity. Now that's different to metals. As you heat a metal, the conductivity goes down. So let's make sure we're sticking with the old IB guidance here. The relative conductivity of metals and semiconductors should be related to ionization energies. And the first ionization energy well, I can look that up on the old data booklet, copyright IB. Group 1 has the lowest first ionization energy. It's easiest to remove an electron from group 1. And as you go across, it's harder and harder and harder to remove an electron from the valence shell. Harder and harder, well, more and more energy is needed. So the metals have low first ionization energy. Oh, hear the thunder in the distance. The semi-metals have intermediary values, and the non-metals have the highest first ionization energies. So let's look at copper and silicon. Oh dear. Their first ionization energy is essentially the same. So the IB has dug themselves in a bit of a hole here. The typical metal and a typical semi-metal, same first ionization energy. So I think there's actually more going on here. I think the electrons in silicon are covalently bonded and can't move around so much because they're stuck in those bonds, but the metallic bonds of copper allow those electrons to move around a bit more easily. And since the IB is always trying to tie the content into the real world, if you decide to get implants, uh, pectoral or calf implants, make sure you ask for silicone. That's the soft human-like material, not silicon. That's shiny, hard, and a little bit rough around the edges. Oh, hello. Silicone, silicon.